Hello there, welcome to Rob's Models, and today we're looking at my build of Tamiya's Mosquito 1 to 48 scale, and this is the FB Mark VI slash NF Mark II version. I've gone for the Mark VI version depicted on the box art. I've got to say, this is a lovely kit. Now, I'll just point out normally, if you've been watching my YouTube channel, you see me building, either uh, doing clips over a bit of a period of time or putting it all into one video and sometimes maybe just talking over photographs of a previous build. The day is a little bit different because this build I actually live streamed the build of it on Twitch. If you've not heard of Twitch go to twitch.tv forward slash Rob's Models and you can actually see how I built this. I will warn you though Twitch doesn't really store videos for a long time it's really designed for live streaming to watch and interact live but only keeps the videos for a short period of time however it's a great way for modelers to interact with other modelers whether they're building themselves or watching other modelers build so if you haven't already pop over there uh, obviously whatever i'm doing when you're watching this you'll be able to watch me build and interact make sure you register for an account that way you can hit the follow button and you get notifications of each time i'm online building and then you can also get in the chat and we can uh, really interact and you can ask questions and uh, we can fire things away directly. But enough about this, back to the Mosquito. So it was a really, really nice build. I've got to say, I really, really enjoyed making it. The kit itself literally just snapped together. It was, I believe, initially tooled in 1998, but it feels like it's even more modern than that. As you're building it, for example, making the landing gear, as things just sort of line up, suddenly there's a little click and they literally just hold in place, leaving you free with your hand just to go and get a little blob of the uh, glue to pop on there. It actually, to say it's snapped together, I mean, even there's a, a door just on there for the crew to enter, even that held in place once it was in the correct position, so I could just go and get the glue and dab it on in my own time, which is absolutely amazing, to be honest, just for how, how well this went together. Uh, it wasn't just an out-of-the-box build, I did do a few little extras with it. I added on an Ares upgrade set for the gun bay, and also an Edward upgrade set for the cockpit. And the reason I went for those is because I wanted the... Well, the cockpit is an area that people always look at. It's a very open um, cockpit area there. Although there's lots of panes to it, uh, you can actually see into the cockpit quite clearly. And if you don't have the pilots in here, things like the harnesses are only decals. So I wanted to go a little bit over with that. However, I didn't get the Ares upgrade set for the uh, cockpit because I thought that might be a little bit too much. And in reality, although you can see in there quite clearly, it's not like you can really, really see in there as much as, for example, you were to have a more modern jet with a canopy in the open position. So you're literally looking directly in. Here you are still having to look through, of course, the clear plastic. So obviously the uh, details do show. You can look directly down. You can see things like the harnesses on the seats. You can see the details on the radio sets. But things like the instrument panel, it's just even though you know it's there, you just cannot see. And even looking through the side door, you can see details on that. You can also get upgrade sets for the wheel wells and the bomb bay. But because I knew this was going to be in a sort of a, a gear out, you know, down position. It's not going to be getting picked up too much. I didn't think it was going to be worth detailing the bottom of it too much, just any, no more than weathering. But I do think the resin gun bay does add something to it, because as you get closer to it, the fact that the uh, these um, are opened up, almost like a petal of a flower, it's a different green in there, it's got that interior green. It draws your eye, something you don't notice straight away, but once you actually look into it, you can see the ammo, you can see the belts that feed the guns, and I must say that the guns themselves did have some quite good detail on the barrels and of the, uh, the main mechanism, but that's all got covered up when the nose cone goes on. But uh, I've got to say, the ammo boxes and things, it, it's a unique sort of part which most people wouldn't have on their Mosquito. And of course, I rounded it off on a little base as well. So the kit went together really, really nicely. So it was just a case of 
by putting it together it sort of gripped itself as it went on very nice to put together uh, if it hadn't have been for doing the resin gun bay and those internal upgrades in the cockpit it would have gone together a lot quicker to be honest those bits probably took quite as much almost as much time and it literally is as you take them off the sprues give them the usual little rub down sound test fit it and literally as you test fit it you can feel things clicking into place hardly any join lines on here there's no seam lines down the back or on the belly of it and that's because it fits together so well it literally just took a few goes over with a little bit of filler a little sand and it really has taken um, you know all those seam lines away just shows how tight the tolerances are on here for a kit that was actually first designed and tooled in 1998 what i say i am genuinely impressed and it really is fun to build so once that all went on there i then used um, the mr surfacer 1200 plus some self leveling thinners and i used that for the primer and that gave me a really smooth finish to work on if you've never used Mr. Surface at 1200 plus some uh, South Leather and Thinners, then I do recommend. It's quite smelly. You will want to uh, have the um, an extractor going, put window open as well. Uh, you also can now get it in an aerosol rattle can as well. So if you haven't tried that, I oh, must say I also use the Edward mask for the canopy. And I want to say I don't always use those. I don't always think they're worth the money, especially for more modern jets but for something like this where there's a total of 24 separate panes as well as on the bottom there's a little window in the bottom of the fuselage and two little round lights on the bottom of the wings but okay the, those were quite easy but a total of 24 panes on the um, on the canopy definitely worth the hassle and the five pound including pnp actually it was less than five pound off of ebay i found it for so once the primer went down it was a case of then getting on the paint now i did have the red colors for the battle of britain i thought how great those would be in there but then once i got the primer on i then realized that actually the mosquitoes paint scheme is actually a little bit different to your standard RAF fighters because it's not a fighter it's a bomber most have the green and the brown on top and then sometimes the sky egg blue or sort of like that pinky sort of color almost sometimes on the bottom for like the spitfires so there's a few different variations this actually needed and i had to purchase separately two tones of gray so on the bottom it was the bs that's the british standard 637 medium c gray so that's a Vallejo code model air 71.307 and then onto the top it was ocean gray which is bs629 which is 71.273 on the Vallejo model airs so a lighter gray on the bottom that actually come out quite well i've got to admit it was actually quite a similar uh, gray to the primer when it was going on not that much difference and maybe you know obviously a bit of a, a tone difference but it was quite similar to the light gray that was then on the primer but you just pop that all over the bottom of it then masked up around the sides didn't really need to mask the wings up just the top of the nacelles where the engines are and then this little wavy line along the bottom there and then I could then hit it with that darker one which is that darker gray which was the um yes the ocean gray so then over the top all the top areas is that ocean gray once that dried used blue tack sausages just to so i didn't get a completely hard edge so it is almost a hard edge but just a little slight blurring which i think actually works well in reality i believe it would have been a hard edge but i do find this works better and gives it more scale effect where those um those hard lines just kind of blend in subtly as you're as you're looking at it in reality if you were actually looking at this if this was a real uh, plane from a distance you wouldn't quite see the those the uh, the colors would kind of blend just obviously just due to traveling through the air so that went on there and then i could actually use in here which was the um, the dark, the RAF green, which is the BS283, and that's the Vallejo model there, 71.126. 71 
So that all went quite well. Actually, that was quite a nice little thing. It's just done one coat of paint over three days. First one for the bottom, then that top gray, and then that darker green on top. And once that mask had come off, it really did pop, which was very nice. I was very pleased with that. Gave it a coat of pledge floor polish. That then sealed that in and gave me a much more smoother finish to work on. Uh, the version I use doesn't really give a glossy version, it's more of a matte version. I find it works for me, it doesn't go too shiny. But it's enough for the decals to go on. Decals went on very well, there's not too many decals on there. A little bit of trouble just on those front ones. Not so much trouble, just more the fact of there is a few uh, rivets and uh, a little bit of raised panelling. But actually, as far as it goes for raised detail, there's not much on the top and on the side, just due to how the actual mosquitoes were constructed. With it being a wooden frame and then sort of stretch canvas over them, there's not too much of the riveting that you tend to get with a metal plane, which was then put together. So that all went quite well. There's a little bit of confusion because typically um, with RAF, especially fighters, where the round all is, that will go symmetrical. But then, for example, you'd have the TEG on that side, but then it would go the TEG on the upper side. So on one, it's going to be offset. Did some checking and it does turn out with the mosquitoes, not all, but typically, especially with the squadron, is actually, they did actually go correct to this. So there, there was a little bit of doubt as to whether the decals were, or more the instructions were wrong and they needed to be split. But that is correct, but they all went on there very well. I put them on with a bit of the micro set and then bedded them in with the micro saw. And it was just those ones over overnight, every what I'd do, for the next days, every couple of hours, I just put a few blobs of that on just to help them just sink down over the contours. Next day, I went in with the Flory Models washes, and these helped to bring out the panel lines. And remember, there's not a huge amount of panel lines on the top. I started off quite simple. I think I went in with something like, and I cannot remember exactly now, but I think it was something like the grey, just to get things going. It might not be the grey, it's already grey. It wouldn't have been the black, that would have been too harsh. I think it was actually the brown. So I just started putting things like the brown on and the wash went on the top and on the bottom. I wanted to keep it relatively clean, but maybe a little bit more muddy on the bottom. I didn't want it to look all dirty and weathered, just worn. So that went on there and then on the bottom, then went on, added a little bit more because there is more details on the bottom, a lot more. And obviously being a lighter gray, it will make the details pop a bit more. So I then went over with um, some dark dirt and some grime just in areas. What I found, it didn't give as much pop as what I wanted after those uh, floral model washes that had actually dried back. That was good for giving an overall sort of weathering, getting the main washes come out. So I then used some of the panel line accent, which is the dark brown, and just used to drop that in various areas on the top mainly around some of the hatches. I also used a little bit of oil paint as well, some of the brown oil paint just to sort of try to blend it in, just to help for maybe those like refueling points, just to uh, pick out a little bit of extra detail here and there, and just make some of those details on the bottom jump out a little bit more. Of course, there is a lot more detail on the bottom than what there is on the uh, top, which is a bit annoying because you're not really gonna be seeing much on the bottom and as you can see with the bombs there I didn't really think there was much point in doing the bomb bays or the wheel bays because you cannot really see much in there so everything on there has just been detailed as, as per the, the kids. So I'm really pleased with how that went that was basically the, the main build and it really does for me work it's got a good sort of um, worn look it doesn't look like it's factory fresh that's not, a, not what I wanted uh, sometimes factory fresh, I personally feel, can look a little bit almost toy-like on a model. Unless you do it really well, sometimes you do sometimes lose that scale effect. So it has got a bit of wear, just a little bit of smoke on the sides, nothing too much. And for that I use some weathering powders as well. Uh, it didn't work too well and I wanted it to be a lot more dirty, almost like the Lancasters with a lot of smoke going over the wings. But in reality, when I then started looking at some reference pictures, they don't really seem to have too much smoke going down the sides, and I think it's due to these cowlings that are actually over the exhaust ports. I think they sort of diverted some of that smoke away, so a little bit of weathering, but not too much. 
do you think with the panel lines that has really sort of popped out some of those details and really does sort of draw the eye once you start getting in close it was a little bit tricky on the back and sides without too much panel detail so i did really make sure i accentuated whereabouts the panel lines are to grab the detail in and then to really set it off which i do think makes the difference is i made a very very simple base for it and the base was literally just getting a lid of a sweet box and then added in a load of DAS clay, the DAS air dry clay. It was just pushing it all in, left it a couple of days to dry. Whilst it was wet, I did actually put in some little dimples, just pushing in where the, uh, the plane would stand. But there's three little impression marks in there and just built that up a little bit. The reason is, is because the wheels are actually perfectly round. Of course, if the plane was actually sat on a surface, then the weight of it will make the tyres bulge at the bottom. So this, you can buy separate resin wheels with that weighted effect, but this hasn't got them. So I just made those little divots in there for the wheels to sit in, and that way that hides the bottom of the wheels and actually makes it look like the, uh, the ground's also bulging up. So it's not completely flat, it's a slightly undulating surface. I then painted it with various browns and greens, literally smeared it on, and when that was dry, covered it in a PVA glue, and then used static grass with a few different shades and a few different lengths, just to give it a more sort of a, a, a grassy surface, obviously. And um, there's still some of that brown patchiness coming through of the dirt, which was what I wanted. I didn't want it to be almost like a snooker table, or when you actually get the uh, stuff that you can roll out. So it does actually look a bit muddy, uh, what I probably will do is actually paint the the rim, that red rim, just uh, that will be literally a, a two minute job, or maybe wrap some tape around, maybe just to cover that. But on the shelf, because this actually fits within the footprint of the plane, the actual stand or the mini diorama doesn't actually pick up any additional room on the shelf. So it doesn't actually overlap, it's just enough for the plane to sit on. However, I do think, just by putting on a bit of grass, as it would have been, I do think that really does set it off. And what I'm thinking of doing as well, and I can do it at a later date, is maybe get some ground crew, and I could just do some ground crew figures or some pilots getting ready at a later date, just to maybe add a little bit more detail onto those bare parts there. But it's not necessary, it's just going to be an option that I might get round to at another point. So, that is my build and my look at Cameos de Havilland Mosquito 1 to 48 scale. That is the FB Mark VI version. Really pleased with how that went together. And I don't just say that as a, oh, that went together really nicely. I have worked with it. I'm currently working on a bit of a dog of a kit. So when you actually have one that goes together nicely, you do appreciate it. Hardly any seam lines, as long as you just make sure you file down any tabs. If something doesn't seem to be fitting with this kit, it's you at fault, not the kit. Genuinely, hardly any filler needed. And what filler there was, was literally just to get rid of any sort of seam lines or anything on there. No real work on that one. As I said, I'm working on something at the moment, which is taking multiple layers of filler. I'm pretty confident even after that, you'll still see the lines. But this one, I recommend for how much it costs. I got it for $24.99 from my local model shop. I recommend you go out and get it as well. It's a fun kit, really enjoyable to make. Okay, I admit I did add the extras to it, but they aren't necessary. The There is actually, you could, well, with the guns themselves, the kit does actually have some of the ammo things, but it doesn't give you the, I mean, you'd have to take the razor sword to it to actually modify the kit to open it up, but that is doable. However, to be honest, the only thing it's doing is just meaning those four little gun barrels coming at the front. If you didn't open it up, you wouldn't know the difference. And if you were going to be having pilots in there as well, I don't think you'd need the harnesses. It's only if, you, if you're going to be not having pilots in there, that just having decals for the harnesses would be very noticeable looking through there. And of course, for this in particular, then the masking set, I would say is essential. Yes, you could do it. Um, it would be fine, but with 24 panels, and they are quite small, you are putting a bit of risk. And just for ease and convenience, for less than a fiver, I'd recommend. So, to be honest, what I would say, get the kit and the masking set. The others are not really necessary, to be perfectly honest. 
it was a really fun, enjoyable kit. I was actually glad, um, I was actually quite sad really to, uh, when I finished it because I did actually enjoy it uh, so much, putting all those liquids together. Naturally, there's always going to be a bit of fettling when you're working with resin, just to get things to fit in. But the Edward set, that went in nicely. Uh, but saying that, with the resin, I've worked with things that are a lot worse. Decals went on nicely, the weathering went on well, paints went on well. It really was an enjoyable one from start to finish. So if you want to see this future builds, then do head over to www.twitch.tv forward slash Rob's Models. Make sure you sign up, get the follow, then you get the notifications of the future builds. See what I'm up to, interact on there. If you're not on Twitch or that doesn't really interest you, of course, leave a comment below. That has been my build of De Havilland's Mosquito. I've really enjoyed it. It's 1 to 48 scale. I've been wanting to build a Mosquito for a while. I've got to say, I don't think the box art does this justice. It looks a little bit weird on the box, but however, when you actually see it, for real, it's a beautiful looking plane. It's a great plane. You know, two Rolls Royce Merlin engines putting out more power than, you know, it would go quicker than the Spitfire. The pilots love these things and I have fun building it. I know I've said that a lot, the fun building it, but I really did. So make sure you hit the follow on here, make sure you hit the follow on Twitch, and I will catch you soon. Thanks very much for watching, enjoy yourself, keep modelling, and catch up with you later.